So recently a email came out um, from Nastif about key programming. And um, I really wanted to start cutting to the chase here and get some answers, at least the mo as much of an answer as we can right now. And I figure I would start with Tony over at Advanced Diagnostics. So um, I'm going to pop him up on the screen and let's get after it. Mr. Tony Presidio with uh, Ilco Advanced Diagnostics. How are you today? Awesome, BJ. Awesome. Always happy to participate in your podcast and try to set either the record straight or try to fix confusion or whatever when it has to do with uh, Ilco or AD. So ask. I, I think you have some questions to ask. I don't know how well I can answer them today, but I'll do my best. Very good. Well, hey, first of all, um, thank you for being here. And, uh, you know, it was nice catching up right before this. I mean, we spent most of the time talking about our golf games, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, or the lack of. But uh, oh, anyway, so yeah. it's, <laughs> but it's really always great to um, catch up with you. And so um, for, for a little bit of history, I want to dive into anyone who maybe doesn't know your history and everything. So before Advanced Diagnostics was purchased by Ilco, um, you worked at Advanced Diagnostics. As a matter of fact, you were a shareholder of Advanced Diagnostics. And so you've been around, uh, what, 2007 or 8, six, 9? Seven, what, yeah, what? Six, seven in there. Yep, yep. Spent yeah, there. Yeah, some time with, uh, got into the business from distribution angle. And then, yeah, was given the opportunity to come aboard uh, with AD and run sales and, uh Eventually, I became a shareholder uh, in the group, um, mm -hmm. but you know, before obviously before the sale to uh, Ilco, and yep. um, and was fortunate enough to stay on with uh, with uh, the group. Three of us in the nucleus, as I call it, uh, John Steiner, Brooke Francisco, and myself, all three shareholders, um, stayed with and are still currently. Uh, employed by Ilco in, in various roles. My roles changed a bit, but in the sense of, you know, everyday communication between distributor, end user, um, trying to make sure that we get the move our mobile vans around. So there are some things that um, I still do today that I did yesterday, but some new things too that uh, with the uh, marriage to um, Kabi Ilko, has afforded me uh, the ability to expand. So um, it's been a good ride. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. So let's just go ahead and hop right into it. All right. So I'm going to pull up on our screen here um, this email that um, I believe every single person on, with uh, has a uh, Nastif ID received, um, I guess, from the time we were recording this about a week, a week or so ago. And I just want to pull it up. I want to read it um, with you here. And then I want to talk about the Smart Pro. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, it says uh, aftermar aftermarket scan tool validation program. Nastif's aftermarket scan tool validation program is coming soon. As soon as 45 to 60 days, you will need a Nastif VSP ID to use a scan tool to perform security functions, including add a key, all keys lost, immobilizer functions, any other process that OE that the OE determines to be security related. You will be responsible for verifying the identity of the vehicle owner, but you are not required to fill out a D1. The tool and NASTIF will take care of this process behind the scenes, toolmakers, have the capability to offer both online and offline functionality. Follow the link below for more information. If you do not have a VSP ID, we recommend applying as soon as possible to avoid any potential interruption to your business. So that is the text from the email in regarding to this. Now, of course, for me, if we key in on a few things, you know, Nastif's aftermarket scan tool validation program is coming soon, right? And it's not hard to read that email and think no matter what the tool that you that you use that's aftermarket um, is going to have to go through this, the, you know, 
this program, right? And um, so my first question is in the email and the question that I've been, uh, have got phone calls over, have got emails over, and I'm sure you have too, is, is the Smart Pro going to be a part of this, let me use the word correct here, aftermarket scan tool validation program? Yeah, the short answer um, is no. I mean, things do change, but no. Um, we're not, we don't have any, I guess the best word would say, we don't have a dog in the fight, but we don't have a connection directly with NASTUF. We've always, I've always brought NASTUF up in our product presentations, our classes that are hosted by distributors and even, even at uh, functions like Aloha. Uh, we don't leave it out of the mix, uh, but it's it's something that we leave up to the end user to make that decision on whether they want to be a member and utilize the resources that Mastiff provides as what we, as I see it as a sanctioned code broker uh, for the industry. And I mean, if you go back to the history of Mastiff a little bit, I mean, it's not a government run type it's it's brought, it was brought on by the industry with the lowest support, and really, it's no secret that the auto manufacturers would like to not have locksmiths or really anybody else in their game. And so, um, with that being said, I mean they came up with the plan, NASTF as an organization or a membership to as a portal to manufacturers, whether it be GM, Ford, or, or what, for certain information, whether it be key codes or security codes or what. So we've always taken a hands-off approach to that. That's our position today. Most likely will be tomorrow. Um, we're monitoring it. We keep, you know, we keep an eye on it. Obviously, it's something that's come out for the industry. And it's, as you said, it's probably shook some people up. And wondering what's going to happen next. If, I had a, if we had a crystal ball, if you had a crystal ball, we could tell what's going to happen six months from now, a year from now, three years from now. We'd probably be in much better position. But uh, for us, it's business as usual. Uh, this this doesn't have really any bearing on our our uh, production or development or how we're how we're approaching the market. Okay. Yeah. So I mean. I guess how I understand things a little bit here is from advanced diagnostic side from way back when to now, everything has always just been reverse engineered on your own. You guys come up with, you know, essentially, I mean, today it's kind of tricky, right? It gets more difficult as time has went on, but um, you guys are reverse engineering everything. You're coming up with your own programs uh, for programming that is just all in house. Am I, is that a correct way to say that? Yeah, I mean, our job, I mean, even before, I mean, today, as it was yesterday and from the start, is to, is to make sure that we can offer uh, um, a product or development that um, services the need. In this case, our largest end user being the locksmith community allows them to go to the vehicle and program a key. Um, I think it was challenged early on. I can't remember what year. I want to say that was probably in the early 2000s. I think it was BMW out of California that challenged it in court of law to, to retain and, and, and control that information with the end user or the, or the vehicle owner owner of the vehicle and and they lost that and so you know keeping the locksmith community or service community out of this game is not something that obviously can be done and therefore again you had a membership or a, an organization like nastuf that uh, cr you know cr was created and i think in respect of you know hey, the auto dealers uh, the dealerships, the manufacturer wasn't wasn't going to say pat on just letting anybody, you know, do what they want. They were going to find a way to 
a revenue source, as to say. You know, again, my yeah. take on it is this probably was brought on by theft of, of equipment, the ill-gotten use of equipment, and we don't we don't experience. I mean, we do experiencing experience a, a, a bit of theft, but we don't experience it at a level um, that's alarming or anything. So, I mean, that's my take on it. Like I said, sure. it's, it's business as usual for us. Um, our goal, as it's been from day one, is to stand alone at the vehicle with a device, in this case, Smart Pro, and be able to program keys, whether it's adding keys or uh, all keys lost, and uh, be able to support that in the, in, the, in the realm of the locksmith community. And I think we've done a very good job of that. We can always do better. The challenges that are coming or that are there, they'll always be there. I mean, whether it's the newest Ford or whatever it is next on the on the docket, per se, uh, the challenge, as you said, reverse engineering, the challenge to develop and maintain um, a level of consistency and ability to promote program keys. That's our that's our job. That's what we, we do that every day. So, yeah. Uh, so, would we love to do it faster, better? Yes, we would. I, but I think you, any any company could look at themselves and say we could, you know, we could do something better. But uh, and I, I'll mm-hmm. keep going back and saying this, and you'll probably get tired of me saying it, but it's business as usual for us <laughs> on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think a couple things that kind of come to mind with this. Um, well. If anyone who is currently doing key programming knows, like, you know, new Ford is obviously in the aftermarket world, not out. And so many people, whether they really wanted to or not, have had to sign up for NASDAQ and get like a, a car DAC or an uh, easy flasher, you know, or um, whatever it might be to be able to do these vehicles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for most people, having the credentials and using the tools needed to do those jobs um, is not like out of the normal per se. You know, I think a lot of the confusion, at least from the feedback I've kind of received is, you know, of course, additional cost, right? No one wants to spend any more um, when it comes to that. And of course, internet connections and those sort of things. And there's still a lot of kind of up in the air um, right now, right? And so we don't really know how all that works. But um, it's really nice to know at this point, the Smart Pro is it's just business as usual. And um, kind of AD is doing what it's always done at this point, right? Yeah, we're not, we're, you know, I think the main thing to get from a discussion like this is, you know, our, we strive for consistency and we strive to bring the best support and device to the market each and every day. And, and that's our, you know, that's been our job. That's been our job from day one. Uh, it, and it hasn't changed. Our, our, our vision uh, hasn't changed. I mean, obviously we are challenged as any industry is with the, as you evolve and technology evolves and you're seeing that you're seeing it play out. In, mm-hmm. in a percentage, and so we look for ways to to improve our ability to bring, you know, the best programming device, be it aftermarket, to to the table, and that's that's what our goal is every day, and uh, and to support that, not just you know bring it to the market, but support it ongoing, and we do that through the ability of having a distributor like you. Um, that is confident with you know the product and ability and, the, and their ability to distribute it into the market. So uh, it's kind of a, a partnership that obviously we need. It's very vital, and it it, mm-hmm. it ties everything in together from our services, from what we develop to what we bring to market through the distributor, through the support of the distributor, through our technical support and administration, and that those vans that run around and visit the nooks and crannies of the country. Um, yeah, it all, we all bring that together. And so again, go using the term business as usual for us, it's business as usual. We're, we're, Mm -hmm. uh, we're up to the task of, uh, of development and moving forward in this industry so that we bring along the locksmith community 
that so much has that right to be a part of this uh, of this industry and, and this service. Yeah, and, and it makes sense, you know. I mean, it, and I'm definitely with you on that. I think also at the same time, like as we continually see the technology being put in vehicles is getting more and more advanced, right? I think for two reasons, uh, it's like twofold from my perspective. One is like technology just keeps improving, and so manufacturers are going to use it. And second, of course, like um, we want to avoid theft as much as possible, right? Like, I mean, I don't want my vehicle, my vehicle stolen. I know you don't either. And so, you know, it's kind of like this weird, weird thing we have going on. But I think um, over the past five, tell me what your thoughts are on this. Over the past five years or so, there's kind of been this thing in the in the key programming world of like, okay, it's kind of business as usual, but then there's also, you know, the Cardax, the J2534 stuff. And you're almost kind of seeing a lot of it kind of merging into one due to, due to the complexity in a lot of stuff. So, yeah, I think, and, and, uh, and that's what we continue to monitor, uh, whether it be through this, you know, this, a, a letter that's come out or the statement that's come out from NASA, but I, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that's been in this industry for a while that, you know, like any industry, it evolves. This one does, a, you know, maybe quicker than others, but the fact is, is that technology does change. Um, it's no secret that the automobile industry wants to secure their their uh, product as much as possible, and uh, yep. we we respect that, and we look for ways that we can service that, so that the end user, in this case, the vehicle owner, has the uh, has a fair chance at you know servicing their having their vehicle service whether it's lost keys or whatever and i think that's that's where this thing kind of came to you know to where it is today in nastuf um, yeah. is that you, you have to have this ability um and, and that's what's going to keep the locksmiths uh you know programming keys and uh, we want to make sure that we provide them with the best product possible in order to do so. And I think when you mentioned theft, I think, I think in my view, and this is just my view on it, I think that this, this letter, this letter that came out from NASA is, is really kind of, if you dig deep, you're looking at, you know, a way to try to uh, minimize um, the, the theft issue on the device side and how that's yeah. put to use in the market and not so, mm -hmm. um, business like good business tactic or way so um we feel very confident with uh, where we're going with our product and how we're how we're developing that again we're this is this is business as usual for us we're not connected to nasta we know about them we monitor it and um that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell so Okay. I, I wish I had no. more to tell you or I could look in this and say, wow, I really see this coming or what, but we don't, we think it's, um, yeah. it's just part and parcel to the, to, um, to doing business. And, um, you know, you, the end user wants to make their decision on NASTA as they should look at it. You know, I mean, we, we don't run from it. We, we tell people, Hey, this is a, this is a way to receive, information that you may need in certain situations. I don't know what the percentage is off the top of my head, PJ. Maybe you get a better vibe for that than I do. Um, I don't think it's a large percentage where it's necessary in having that, whether that that percentage grows or not, you know, mm -hmm. works out. But I don't think it's a big enough yep. percentage to uh, – for me at least, to worry about at this point in time. So, sure. like I said, we'll continue to monitor it. And um, for us, it's, as I'll say it probably <laughs> two, two or three more times before we finish the conversation, business as usual. Yeah, you know, I mean, Tony, I think this is one of the rare times that when I've come to you asking for information and you actually just say business as usual and I have nothing new to report. I'm actually like excited about that. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I am too. I mean, it's you know, God, I'd love you know, I'd love to be able to say we, you know, we cracked the, you know, the code to break can or cure cancer or something, but you know, today is you know just like any other day. Our goal is to put the best product to market that services the locksmith community and others though that are in the service of programming car keys. And that's our main goal. I mean, obviously right. under the Ilco Kaba umbrella, we, we do much more, but in the sense of yep. this conversation and this letter that came out from NASTA, it, it has really no bearing. We have, you know, we'll continue to watch it from a distance, but we're not affiliated with NASTA. We're not connected in any way. Um, it's a service. The end user decides whether that service is right for them or they need that or they feel they need that. That's their prerogative to uh, to become a NASTF member on that. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I wish I had I could tell you more or something different or something that would shake up the, the group. You know, we just hope that our loyal customers and there's a lot of them understand, you know, our job is to keep, you know, be consistent and keep keep developing and keep doing what we do. If we could do it better, you know, we 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 uh, we always welcome the feedback. I'm sure we can improve in areas, but day in day out, the Smart Pro that's out there today does a very good job at, at doing jobs. And uh, I, I think uh, I think most that I talk to at least feel that way. Again, we can always improve in areas. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I think it's good, Tony. I mean, I thank you for coming on, um, answering and talking about this topic. Um, I know that you nor I have a crystal ball and um, what happens in the future. I mean, I, I mean, we'll learn in the future, but at least as of right now, it's business as usual for the Smart Pro, uh, which is really honestly great to hear. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you doing that. And of course, if um, anything changes or I have any more questions, I'll probably be like, hey, Tony, want to hop on another <laughs> call here and uh, talk about it. Always happy to join you, PJ. I have a tremendous amount of respect for you and your dad. I've known you guys for quite a long time now and uh, respect the, the, your ability to service uh, the community, the locksmith community out there as a distributor that you are and um, always happy to lend a, a voice when I can. Um, and just like I said, we want to thank all of the folks that uh, invest in, you know, advanced diagnostic product or ILCO for that matter. And mm -hmm. we just want to make sure everybody knows that, Hey, we're, we were here yesterday. We're here today. We'll be here tomorrow. It's business yep. as usual. Very good, Tony. Well, hey, thanks again. And for all of you watching, if you have questions or you're hoping that um, Tony or myself would elaborate on a certain point, uh, go ahead and drop them in the comment section below and um, we'll do our best to answer them um, to the best of our ability. And um, in the meantime, uh, we're just going to keep watching and seeing and uh, I'm going to keep digging in on this topic, Tony, and kind of see what uh, how we can pop out. And I guess the biggest thing for me is I want to be as helpful as possible to people who have um, concerns and questions and how to really navigate um, this time ahead of us. So, um, yeah, we welcome that. Welcome any feedback or any questions out there, like you said, um, anytime. Awesome, Tony. Well, thanks again. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yeah, we'll see ya. Well, I guess this is the end of the video and it's time for you and I to part ways until next time. But hey, before you go, I really do wanna make sure that you know that when you comment on our videos and you include the hashtag walkboss, you automatically get hooked up to win cool stuff that we give away live here on YouTube every Tuesday. So we'd love to have you join us. We'd love to have you comment and I look forward to reading them soon.